Welcome to Darasa Online. My name is Mr. Kileo Abubakar Davidson. I am a geography teacher and today we are going to learn or to start on uh, survey and map making <clears throat> and we will focus much on prismatic compass survey. So let's see what is prismatic compass survey. Uh, prismatic compass survey it is a type of survey method which entails to determine the position of an object by measuring its angle to or from a fixed point. Listen to me very careful. Prismatic compass survey we refer to the type of survey which aim is to determine the position of an object, the position of a certain point by measuring its angle either from a fixed point or to a fixed point. Let's say uh, we have two points. We have point A right here and we have point B right here. Then let's take this point A as a fixed point. As a fixed what? As a fixed point. It means if we want to know the position of point B, if we want to know the position of point, point B, we can measure or we can determine or we can identify the position of point B from point A by measuring the angle of point B either from point A or to point A. So the process or the situation whereby uh, the surveyor can be able to identify or to determine the position of a certain point, for instance point B, from a fixed point or from a known point, we call it the prismatic compass survey, see? Or sometimes, apart from um, points, I can explain, uh, for instance, in a real life situation. Let's take, uh, right here in Dar es Salaam, we have um, a very known place, a point known as Ubungo, see? So from Ubungo, uh, if you take Ubungo as you are a uh, fixed point you can be able to determine or to identify other areas from Ubungo. We can use Ubungo as a fixed point. So from Ubungo we can determine where is Mbagala, see? From Ubungo we can determine where is the city center. From Ubungo we can determine where is Tegeta, see? So if we use Ubungo for instance, this is Ubungo. Ubungo is your fixed point. Then from Ubungo you can measure the angle of maybe uh, 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 Mbagala or Tegeta from Ubungo. From Ubungo, you can measure the angle of maybe Mwenge from Ubungo. So we can be able to determine the position of Tegeta and Mwenge from Ubungo. It means we take Ubungo as our, as our fixed point. So we go back right here. What is prismatic compass survey? As I said, the prismatic compass survey refers to the type of survey method which aim is to determine the position of two or more uh, area or point by using or by measuring the angle of these two points from a known point, see? Then from there, it means right now we have seen that we can be able to determine the position of a different area by measuring its angle from a certain area which is a known point. So it means right now we are dealing with what we call bearings, see? What is bearings? Bearing will refer to the angle measured in either degree, minute or second that can you can you be used to uh, show the position of a given area. We are talking about bearings. It bearing refers to the angle in degree, means or second that can be used to show the position of a given area. It means we can determine the position of a certain area by measuring its angle from a fixed or known point. See? And the, we, normally we use the, what we call the bearing. So from there, <coughs> we have two types of bearing right here. We have what we call the, the, forward, the forward bearings. Remember, this is, is a revision in the backward bearing. So, what I'm trying to do right here is to make a simple revision so I, I can remind you what are we going to deal with. It means right here we are going to deal with measuring of angle where we will see or we'll be able to identify different location of different area by using angle or what we call bearings. See, that's why I say bearing refers to the angle in degree, minute or seconds that you show the position of an object by measuring its angle from, from or to a fixed point. See, example, measure the angle of point A from point B. It means right here we can determine, you see, we can be able to determine, to identify the position of point A from point B. It means we measure the position of point A so as to know where point A is from point B. You see, and we use angle. Angle is what? As bearings. So we have two types of bearing right, here, right there. We have what we call the forward bearing and the backward bearing. So what is forward bearing? By the definition, forward bearing refers to the angle measured from the observer's position to the object. It means it is measured from the known point to a known point. As I said earlier, let's say Ubungo is our known point, see? And the, 
uh, Tegeta or Mwenge is our unknown point. It means from Ubungo. You can uh, identify or you can be able to know where is Tegeta and Mwenge from Ubungo. It means right now, Zengo measured from the known point to a known point. We call it what? Forward bearing. So it means it is angle or bearing measured from the observer's position to the object. So remember, we take observer position as known point, object as a known point. So angle measured from the known point, from the fixed point, from the observer position to the object, we call it the the forward bearings. Then the opposite of it we call the backward bearing. Uh, backward bearing, it means right now we refer to the angle measured from the object to the observer position. Angle measured from the unknown point to the known point, we call it the, the backward bearing. So it is the opposite of what? Of the uh, forward bearing. Then from there, mathematically maybe if you, uh, you have given one angle, you can be able to determine or to identify the other angle. For instance, given forward bearing uh, is equal to 120 degree. Then you calculate, calculate its what? Its backward bearing. See? Mathemat mathematically, if you, want, you have one angle, it means you can be able to, de to determine the other angle. Let's say you have forward bearing is 120 degree. Then you ask it to calculate its back bearings. So remember, remember, remember forward bearings, if we take a forward bearing plus or minus 180, degree then you get its back bearing you see so as you can see we have the forward bearing as we ask it to find its back bearing there it means in order to find the back bearing we have to use forward bearing plus or minus 120 i mean 180 degrees so as to can get the back bearing so we have the forward bearing as 120 then you take 120 degree plus 180 degree is equal to the back bearing see so, because I have one point, it means if I have one point, mathematically I can be able to, to find or to get the other, uh, the ask the angle. For instance, I said we have given right here forward bearing is 120 degrees, then we ask it to calculate its back bearing. Then from there, we can substitute through this formula. See, we have the forward bearing, then plus 180 degrees equal to what? To the back bearing. So, you get back bearing is equal to. 300 degree. <coughs> then from there, let's see some of the very important concepts in the prismatic compass survey. So let's go back to the definition of the prismatic compass survey, as I said, refer to the method or type of survey, which aim is to determine, which aim is the, it is to identify the position of an object by measuring its angle to or from a fixed point. Then we have different equipment used in prismatic compass survey. Uh, the main equipment used right here it is uh, equipment used in a prismatic compass survey. Equipment used. Equipment used uh, by making a simple summary or a fast summary as a revision. We have what we call the two compass trough. Two compass what? Troughs. What are these? Two compass trough we refer to the small rectangular wooden boxes on which the magnetic needles are contained. It means we refer to the small bo wooden boxes uh, on which the magnetic needle or the magnetic compass are contained. So in a simple way I can say it is a small box uh, in rectangular in shape where the magnetic needle is found inside it. See, Why do we use the uh, wooden boxes? We use the wooden box so, so as to allow uh, not to lose the magnetic field or the magnetic compass, you see? Because if you use the metal material, it means it will lose. It will be easy for it to attract the uh, magnetic field with, which is made up within the, the magnetic, magnetic needle. Then magnetic needle will not be okay in showing exactly the accurate angle of a certain point. That's why we use the, the wooden boxes. Then I say, so we, we have two. Why two? Because we have to measure two angles. We have to make one point is forward bearing and the other angle is what is back bearing that's why we use two compass troughs it means these are the two small rectangular wooden boxes on which inside there are what there are magnetic compass <coughs> for doing what for measuring forward and back bearing then from there we have what you call the metal marker metal marker 
Metal marker refers to an instrument that is used to detect the presence of uh, metal material in a surveyed area. See? Before doing or taking different process um, in order to measure the angle of a certain area from a, fi a fixed point, you have to make sure that the surveyed area has no metal material that will attract to your magnetic needle or magnetic field. So, how are you going to know how to, de how to determine uh, either your surveyed area there is a magnetic, ma I mean a metal material or not? It means you have to use what we call the metal marker. So, metal marker is an instrument that you to detect. It is used to detect, to detect the presence, the presence of metal materials in a surveyed, surveyed area or area to be surveyed. It means before uh, conducting the prismatic compass survey, you have to go with the metal marker, see, so that you can check, you can detect either the area it has many metal material or less metal material. If we found there is a less metal material, it means it will be easier for you to conduct your prismatic compass survey. But if we find the area uh, is made of a lot of metal material, it means <coughs> you'll have to use the other method to survey. Because, why? Because uh, at the end you'll get a lot of errors during the measurements. Then from there, <coughs> These are the main equipments. So we use the two compass troughs to measure the bearings, and we use what we call the metal markers. And we have uh, we have other instruments: uh, chain survey equipment. We use chain survey equipment for measuring distance, linear distance between the two points. Let's say this is the point A. See, then I'm measuring. I am measuring the distance from. I mean, the angle from this point to point B somewhere else. It means I have to make sure I measure the distance as well. Not only the angle, it means I'll have to measure the distance as well from one point to another point. So I'm going to use chain survey equipment in measuring the distance from one point to another to another point. That's why I write chain survey equips. So you may use either in a chain. You may use either chain or to measure either you need peg, you need ranging pool, you see, notebook and pencil. So this is the instrument for obtaining or measuring the linear distance between the two points when measuring forward and back bearing, see. Then from there, <coughs> we have the very important uh, concept right here because we have seen the equipment, we have seen how to measure the bearings. So let's go to the to the main concept or main uh, content in our prismatic compass survey. The aim is to know, to determine the position of, a, of an object or point by measuring its angle either from or to a fixed point. See? So how are you going to measure the angle of a particular area uh, from a known or fixed point? How are we going to measure the angle of a particular area from a fixed or a known point? It means, let me explain two methods. Method used. Method employed can be either intersection or sometimes they use resection. So let's see what is intersection, what is resection. You see, intersection, uh, <coughs> intersection, they say, refer to the process of measuring or identifying two object position by measuring its angle from a single fixed point. You see, we identify two object position by measuring its angle from a single fixed point. It means right now, maybe I have point A, this is point A. Then I can determine two position by using the single fixed point. It means I can, I can identify either point B and C, where are point B and C from a fixed point. It means we identify where is point A and point B from a fixed point. Then we say that is intersection. Why resection? It is the opposite of intersection. It means right now we can be able to identify a single fixed point by using two, a single unknown point by using two known points. It means we use either these two points B or C to identify where position of point A is. That is what is called the resection. <coughs> so by giving the real example right here, is that I've used before that let's say maybe we have this is Ubungo. See? Ubungo it is a bus terminal, a very known bus terminal right here in Dar es Salaam. Then we have here Tageta, see? 
and we have right here, let's say Mwenge, somewhere Mwenge, there. It means <clears throat> if you measure the position, I mean, if you can be able to identify the position of Tegeta and Mwenge from Ubungo. Why? Because Ubungo, it is a known point. Uh, that process, we call it intersection. It means right now, we were able to identify the position of the two point or more points by using a single fixed point. I said a single fixed point, it means a single known point. So we use the single known point to identify to a known point. It means <clears throat> from Ubungo you can reach Tegeta, then from Ubungo you can reach where? Mwenge. The opposite of it we call it the resection. It means the resection, it is a process or situation whereby one or a single fixed and, 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 and a single unknown point can be identified from two known point. It means someone tell you uh, if you want to reach Bungo, then you have to make sure you either go Tegeta or you reach Mwenge. It means from Mwenge you can reach Bungo or from Tegeta you can reach Bungo. It means right now we can use two or more fixed or known point to identify the single unknown point. That is what we call the resection. I can tell you that uh, what is the prismatic compass survey? As I said earlier, prismatic compass survey it is the method of survey which aim is to know, to identify the position of an object by measuring its angle from or to a fixed point. Then I explained the, uh, what is bearing and the two types of bearing because it's very important to know what's bearing and its two types. Then from there I explained the equipment. Then right here we have the method that is used in prismatic compass survey. We have either the intersection or the resections. Then from there, let's see how to um, calculate some of the, of the questions related to prismatic compass survey. And remember, most of these questions are in different uh, exams. It's more exams. It may be a NECTA exams. It may be a competence exams. So let us see or look on different questions related to prismatic compass survey. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Let us see the question right here. Uh, we have the question, um, as I said, most of these questions are the competent questions. See, they need you to understand the key needs of the question. See, they need you to be competent. Uh, I mean, they, they, they want you to explain deeply what you know about it, the prismatic compass survey. So, by looking at the example right here, uh, we have the question, as you can read. Uh, we have the question written here, as you can read. I'm sure you can read that. Surveyor's team travel at a series of connected chain while measuring angle and it called side details nearby the roadway. So it means the surveyor's team, they are traveling by walking in a series of connected chain. While measuring angle, we call them bearings, and it called side details near the, nearby the roadway. The surveyors moved from point A to point B, 400 meter and they measure 45 degree. Then from point B to point C, they move 300 meter and they measure 100 degree. Then from point C to D, they measure, I mean, they move uh, 250 meter and they measure, this one is its four bearing. Then from point D to E, they measure, I mean, they measure uh, 500 meter as its length from point D to E and they measure 90 degree. Lastly, from point E to F, they measure a 50 degree and they go 400 meter. Then from there, you ask it to ta tablet the data with its back bearing, its distance in centimeter. So right now, uh, we have to ask ourselves that in our data right here, we have distance in meters. See? And right here, we ask it to, uh, to tablet the data with back bearing and its distance in terms of what? Of centimeter. It means we have to use a suitable scale to change the meters, the distance which are given in meter right here into centimeters, that's one. And later, uh, we have to tablet the data with its back bearing. Why back bearing, not forward bearing? It means the angle given in our question right here, this is the forward bearing. Why? Because we are told that uh, they move from point A to B, and they measure these bearings right here. From point A to B, it means that those are the forward bearing. A to B. Not A from B, no. It is A to B. It means they measure from A to B. That's why we call these are the forward bearings. So all the angles uh, that are given right here, we call them the forward bearing. That's why the question asks us to use the suitable scale 
to use a suitable scale to present the data, you see, in a table form. So in a simple way, it means we have to write the table of this data, uh, and they have, we have to show its back bearing as well as the distance in, in centimeters. So let's go. It means we have to make sure this is our table. So let's assume this is our table. See? Our table is always like this. So we have leg. Leg means the station. The point from one point to another point. See? From the point where the surveyors start to measure their bearings to where they've ended there at point F. It means these are the legs. Then we have the forward bearing right here. Then we have the back bearing. Then we have distance here. So the distance we have to record in both sides. It means there are distance in meters and the distance in what? In centimeters. So they gave us the, the distance in meters. And when I say leg, as I said, these are the stations. See? The surveyor's team, they move from point A to point B. It means they move from point A to point B. They measure forward bearing is what? It's 45 degree. Are we there? And they move 400 meters. Then from point B to point C, I, I think we are all, please, can you? From point B to point C, B to C they measure uh, 100, B to C they measure 100 degrees, it's forward bearing, and they measure what? 300 meter. It means they measure 300 what? 300 meter. Then from point uh, C, <coughs> C to D, they measure 80. So C to D, they measure 80 degree, and they, they go um, they go from point C to D, they go 250 distances in meter. Then from there, uh, from point D to E, D to E, they measure uh, 500 meters here, 500 what? 500 meter and they measure 90 degree from point E to E. It means they measure 90 degree. Then lastly, from point E to F, from point E to F, they measure um, 400 meter, see, and uh, 50 degree. So these are the given data. Right now, they want us to tablet the data with its back bearing in distance in what? In centimeter. We have given the distance in meter. It means we have to use the suitable scale to convert this distance, which are in meter, into centimeter. Thereafter, we have the forward bearing. It means because we have the forward be bearing, we can be able right now to, <coughs> to, to find the back bearings. See? Because I know from the formula I, show you, I showed to you earlier that <coughs> through forward bearing plus or minus 180 degree, we can be able to, back it to, I mean, to get its back bearing. From there, we can be able to fill this gap right here. And uh, we can use a suitable scale to change the distance which are in meter right now into into centimeter. So let's see. See? So let, let us choose the suitable scale. Let us use one centimeter is equal to 100 meter is our suitable scale. So let us use this scale to change this distance which are in meter into what? Into centimeter. So if I say, for instance, um, one centimeter is equal to 100 meter is my suitable scale, then I can be able to change this distance which are in meter into what? Into centimeter. Why? I say one centimeter is equal to 100 meter. How about 400 meter? Right here. How about 400 meter? Will give me how many centimeter? Automatically will give me 4 centimeter. So right here we'll have 4 centimeter. Right here we have 3 centimeter. Are we together? Then from there we have 2.5 what? Centimeter. Then we'll have 5 centimeter. Then we'll have how what? 4 centimeter. It means we have the distance right now in what? In centimeter is the question asked. Then we have to make sure we have already tabulated the data, but we have to, uh, to, to fill the data or to make sure that the, the table is its what? Back bearing as well. So how are we going to find the back bearing from here? It means we have the forward bearing ring. We can substitute to the formula, this formula right here to get the back bearing. So let's start by using, I mean, we have forward bearing as this one. How are we going to back the back? Uh, how are we going to get the back bearing? It means for five degree plus 180 degree is equal to what? To back bearing. It means the back bearing right now will be 225 degree. 
so it will be 225 degree. We have 100. 100, if you put here 100, it means plus so that one is 280 degree. 280 degree. Then you have 80. Is the forward bearing, if we put here, you add 180, they give 260 degree. Is its back bearing. You have 90, you put right here, plus this one, you get 270 degree. 270 degree as its back bearing. Then you have 50, 50 plus 180, then you get 230 degrees. See? 230 degree is what? As its back bearing. Student, I'm sure <coughs> we are all together up to this point. I said the question asked the tablets the data with its back bearing and and the distance in centimeter. As you can see, we have the table right here. I have tablets the information. I have put the information in table form, and I have write the information in table form with what distance in centimeter because I have used the scale this one to change the given distance which I in meter into centimeter. And I I have used I have used the forward bearing this one provided with the help of that formula to get the what is back bearing. So this is the first question. It means we've answered the first question. Tablet the data with its back bearing and distance in what? In centimeter. Then you plot the traverse. How are we going to plot the traverse? Please. Uh, <coughs> in the plotting the traverse, <coughs> we can use uh, forward bearing and distance in centimeter. Remember, right now we can not be able to use the distance in what? In meter. It means if we want to plot the traverse from what? From our table right here, we can use two information or details. We use the forward bearing as well as the distance in what? In centimeter. Are we together? If we want to plot the travel from the data provided, it means we can use two details or information from the table. We use forward bearing as well as the distance in what? In centimeter. Why? Because we cannot be able to draw 400 meter in our exercise book. That's why we use the distance which are in centimeter right now. So how are you going to, to, to plot the travel? Listen here. We use forward bearing as I said. So let us start from the point A. It means, <coughs> let's say this is point A right here. This is point A. See? Then from point A it means I will draw my four cardinal point. Remember here it is zero. This is 90 degree, this is 180 degree, this is 270 degree. Right now, I don't know from A, where am I going? But according to the information provided, we are asked to go from point A to point B. Then you measure 45 degree from point A to point B, then you go 400 meters. But right now, we are using the distance in centimeter. You see, then you draw 45 degree. So then you take your protector, you measure right here, 45 degrees. Then if this is 45 degrees, then I will go 4 centimeter up there. This is 45 degrees. Then this distance, it is 4 centimeter up to point B. So let us assume this is 4 centimeter up to this point. This is point B. See? Then it's over from there. <coughs> then from B to C, B to C, you measure 100 degrees. B to C, then you have to draw your four cardinal point correctly. This is zero degree, see? This is 90 degree. This is uh, 180 degree. This is 270 degree. So if you measure 100 degree exactly, it means, remember, this one is 90 degree. So 100 will be somewhere there. Then you measure 300 meter. I mean, if three centimeter. Then you go up to C. So let us assume this is 3 cm right here. You see? Then you, this is point C. This is point B. This is 100 degree. You see? This is point A to point B. You go how many kilometer? I mean how many meter? 400 meter. So you write 400. Then you do the, like this one. Means 400 meter from point A to point B. Then from point B to point C, you go 300 meter. Then you write 300, either meter or you can cycle like this one. So it means from point A to point B, it is that one. From B to C, it is that uh, uh, distances. So from point A to point B, we have measured 45. From point B to C, we have measured 100 centimeter. Let's see, <coughs> from point C to, to, to D. From point C to D, we have to measure 80. 
you see h is our bearings direct or tight then we have remember this is 90 so 80 is almost somewhere there see you have to measure 80 so it's almost somewhere there so this is a 80 degree so if this is a 80 degree how many uh, meters are we going it means 80 we go 250 see then let's say up this point this is 250 then 250 then you make like this one this is 80 then c to d then this is point d right there see this is point d then from d <coughs> from point d you have to go 90 degree from point d you have to measure 90 degree see from point d we can measure 90 degree see then we measure for i mean 500 meters to point e then from point e then we measure as you, you can read the question right there it tells us from point E to F, it means we measure 50 degree as its forward bearing and a 400 meter its, its distance from point E to point F. So we measure 50 degree to point E to point F. This is point F and the, we measure 400, 400 meter. You see? So as you can see, <coughs> we have plotted the travel right now. This travel, it shows that the surveyor seems they have traveled from point A to point F. Uh, uh, nearby the rootway while measuring angle as well as side details nearby the rootway. So this is the second uh, question because we were asked the, uh, the first question it was asked us to plot the data or to put the data into the table form. And then the second question it asked us to, it asked us to, to plot the travels. So this is our travels as you can see and it is the open ended travel because the, the last question it asked it asked the ask, um, which type of travels you obtained in B above that is question number C which type of travels you have obtained in B above it means in number B or uh, in Roman B we have obtained the open ended travels why we have obtained the so the, the, the answer is open open ended open-ended travels. Why open-ended travels? Because the surveyor team, they have moved from the starting point, from the point A to point F, and they did not return too close or to the starting point. Why open-ended travels? Uh, because reasons. Reason the surveyors, surveyor's team travel travel by walking by walking in a series of connected in a series of connected chain while measuring while measuring angle angles from point A to point e to point F and at the end they did not they did not return return either return either either too close or they did not return to the starting point see so we call it is open-ended travel because as you can see right here um <coughs> our travels uh the surveyor teams they start from point a to point b to point C, D, E, up to point F. They did not return to the starting point or too close to the starting point. So this type of travels, we call it the open-ended what? Travels. And I have uh, write down, I have written here uh, the, the reason. Why do we call it the open-ended travel? I said because the surveyor stream traveled by walking in a series of connected chain, where at the end, they did not return too close or to the starting point. Uh, example of open-ended uh, travels is like you are measuring the angle between uh, a road 
or a river which starts from this point and it ended somewhere else. So uh, by summarizing from there, uh, especially on this open-ended travels, let us remember we have two types of travels in the prismatic compass survey. We have the open-ended travel and the closed-ended travels. In a closed-ended travels, we will see that the, the surveys team is starting from point, one point and they go uh, to different point and at the end they return too close to the starting point. Are we together? Or they may return to the starting point. For instance, if you are measuring uh, the area uh, of a school ground or a playground area, of course you will start at a certain point, you will go uh, through uh, different routeways measuring the area of maybe a playground area. Let's see another question. Uh, this is a very important question, as I've told. Um, it is one among the competent questions. Okay, let's see how competent it is. Okay, we carefully start the following data, survey data and answer the questions that follow. <coughs> carefully start the following survey data and answer the questions that follow. It means we have leg or station from point A to point A dash or point E. To a dash, uh, we have the forward bearing, back bearing, and distance in a meter. So, uh, the first process right here is to use or to choose a suitable scale, see, so that you can be able to change these distances right here, which are in meter, into centimeter before doing anything. Because remember, <coughs> sometimes you may be asked to plot the travel. You cannot plot the travel <coughs> by I mean, using the distance in what? In meters. You cannot be able to use the distance which are in meter in your exercise book. So you have to change the distance which are in meter into what? Into centimeter. So that it can be easier for you to draw the, or to plot the travel within or inside or in your exercise book. Then let's see the question from there. <coughs> let's see the question. Uh, the question asks us, um, plot the travel by using, by using the suitable scale, plot the travel. That's the question number one. See, plot the travels using the, the scale, this one. So remember, as I told earlier, that in, if you want to plot the travels, you have to use the, the forward bearing and the distance in what? In centimeter. So by referring to our table uh, given, it means we have to change the given um, distance, which are in meter, into centimeter. See? Then from there, by using this scale, which means one centimeter is equal to 100 meter, then from here, we can be able to change our given scale. Okay? A to B, we have given A to B. The distance from point A to point B, it is 900 meter. So you say one centimeter is equal to 100 meter. The distance from point A to point B is 900 meter. It means we have to change this 900 meter into what? Into centimeter, which will be equal to nine what? Nine centimeter. Then the, uh, the distance, this is the distance from point A to point B. Then the distance from point B to point C will be equal to, um, because it, was, it is 700, then it will be equal to 7 centimeter. Then C to D uh, will be equal to, uh, so because it is uh, 700, then it will be equal to 7 centimeter. Then D to E, because it is, um, according to our question, it is 900, then it will be equal to 9 centimeter. Then the last point is from E to A1, A dash from E to A dash is equal to, uh, it was given as 800 uh, meter, then it is equivalent or equal to 80 centimeter. So we use the given distance and the uh, forward bearing to plot what we call the travels. From point A to point B, uh, we've given forward bearing is 265 degree. It means, let us assume this is point A right here. See, then you draw, <coughs> you'll draw your point A, then you'll measure 265 degree to point B. It means, remember, this is 0, 90, 180, 270. Then we measure 265, this is 180, then 265 is almost there. It means, this is your 265, then you measure 9 centimeter to this point. So, this is 900 meter. This is point B. Then from point B, you draw again your cardinal point. This is point B. This is point E. This is point A. This is 265 what degree. Then from point A to point B, <coughs> it is 900 meters. Then I have written here 
900 meter and I have uh, uh, measure my, 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 my bearings is 265 degree from point A to point B. Then from point B to point C, listen to me very careful, from point B to point C, it is, you have to measure uh, 350 degree to point C. This is point B. Then I have to measure 360, I mean 350. This one is 180, 270. Remember right here, if I complete the, 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 uh, the, 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 this uh, angle, it will be 360. Then 350 is almost there. Then you go, you go uh, 7 centimeter. So up to this point, somewhere there. This is point B, this is point C. Then you measure your, you measure your, <coughs> I mean you put your four cardinal points, point C, to point, this is point B, then point, to point C. This one, this is 265, then this is 350 degrees. Then from point B to, B to C, it is 700. Then you write 700 meter there. See? Then from point C, <coughs> from point C to, to D, it means you go 700 meters. Then you will draw 7 centimeter. It means you will measure 70 degrees. So remember, this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. So uh, 70 degree it is almost there, this is 70 degree. Then from 70 degree it means you measure, <coughs> you measure 900 meter. So then we use what? 9 centimeter. Then this is 70. Then we go, we go, we go 900. This is 70 degree, then you go 900 from point C to point what? To point D. Then from point D uh, to point E, <coughs> from point D to point E, you measure 110 degrees. This is 70, you measure 110 degree. It means this is 110 degree. Remember, this is 90. 110 is there, right there. Then you go um, 900, see? Then from here, this is 110 degree. You see from point D to point E, right there. This is my point E. This is D, this is point E. Then from point D to E, it is measured how much? 900. 900 meter. Here it is 700 meter. So you may do like this. You may not write meter exactly, but you, you may put a cycle this way, see? Which means from point B to C it is 700 meter. From point C to D it is 700 meter. From point D, to E, it is 900 meters. So remember, we are not using meter in drawing, we use centimeter because we have converted the given distance which are in meter into centimeter. And right now, we draw the travel. Then from point D to E, as I told you, it is 110 degree. Then from point E to, from point E to a dash, uh, we have to go 800 meter and we have to draw 250 uh, degree. It means we measure 250 degree then you will see this is 90, I mean this is 0, 90, 180, 270. So automatically this is 180, 250 is almost somewhere there, see? Because if I complete the line, then this is 270. Then 250 is almost there. Then you go 9, I mean 800 meter up to this point. Then you write this is 250 what? Degree. Then this one is 800 what? Meter. <coughs> then from point E to A die, then this one is A, A what? A dash. Then from there, <coughs> we have completed the question number one, that we have to plot the travels using a suitable scale. And I have chosen this as my uh, suitable scale. And I, uh, why we use the scale? We use the scale so as we can be able to convert the given distance which are in meter into centimeter. And then I told you earlier that in order to draw the travels, it means you need to use the forward bearing and the distance in centimeter. Are we together, student? Okay, thank you very much. Then from there, <coughs> so we have completed the question number one. We have plotted the travels. So this, it is a plot, a, 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 what, a, a, a travels uh, we have plotted. The, the question number two, it asks, identifies the station with errors. See? Sometimes you may, you, may, you may come across questions that ask the, you what type of travels you have drawn above. It means this is what we call the closed-ended travels. Why? Because the surveyors team, they have moved from point A to point A dash, where at the end they have returned too close to the starting point. <laughs>
the second question, which said, uh, identify the station with errors. So in order to identify the station with error, let us be very careful. In order to identify the station with error, <coughs> let me use this part. In order to identify the station with error, we take the difference between uh, two bearings given in your table. We take the difference between two bearings provided in your table. It means station with error, station with error, station with errors. Uh, we all know how to find the station in, in error, as I have explained earlier, that in order to know which station there is error, it means you have to take the difference between forward and back bearing. So if you get the difference either greater or less than 180, then in that station there is error. I repeat, please, in order to know either this station or that station there is error, we take the difference between the two angles. If the answer is greater or less than, or the difference is, answer, is greater or less than 180 degree, it means there is error. Let's say, or let's check an example there. <coughs> we have at point A, at point A we have uh, forward bearing is 265 and back bearing is 85. So to know which station there is error, it means we take the difference between forward and back bearing. So if the difference is less than or greater than 100 degree, I mean 180 degree, it means there is error. So let's try to take 265 minus 85. You see, then you take two, I mean 350 minus 173, uh, 250 minus 70, uh, 290 minus 110. So that's how to, to, to find the station with error. So by referring to our question there, it means point A, 265 degree, minus 85 what degree zero uh, eight one so point a there is no error then let's go to point b point b by referring to a question it means we take through 350 degree minus 173 you see this one minus this one uh, uh seven four seven um one degree here there is error because i said in order to check if the in a given station there is error, we take the difference between the forward and back bearing. So if the difference is less than 180, or it is greater than 180, there is error. So point B, there is error. Then we go point C. Let us check point C. Point C, it is 250 minus 70. 250 degree minus 70 degree. It means here 0, 15 minus, uh, is this one is equal to 80. So point C, there is no error. Are we together? Then let's go to point D. Point D, it is um, <coughs> 290 degree minus 110 degree. See? This one minus this one is equal to 0 degree, 81. Then we find point D, there is no error. Why? Because it, uh, we got exactly 180 degree similar to this point. It means there is no error. Let's go to point, the last point, which is point E. Point E is equal to 250 degree provided minus 70 degree. Then you'll get this one, 0, uh, 15. Then you take 1, 15 minus 7 is equal to 8. 0 is equal to 1. Then you find there is no error. So the station with error according to our question, or in our question, it's only this point right here, point B. It means point B, it is a station with what? With error. <coughs> So you conclude by saying, therefore, the station with error is, we say, station, station B. Uh, let's go to another question. Suggest is the possible causes of the misclosure. So let's see uh, the possible causes of the misclosure. What caused the misclosure before closing it, okay? What caused the, the misclosure? The possible causes of the misclosure are possible causes of the misclosure. Possible causes of the of the misclosure. Possible causes of the misclosure one <coughs> is the presence of the local attraction material, the presence of different metal material around the surveyed or in a surveyed area. Co so the presence of local attraction materials. 
such as metal, metal material at the surveyed area. So you have to avoid the presence of metal material, aluminium, iron, and other uh, metal material in the surveyed area. As I told earlier, we have to use the metal marker in order to identify either your surveyed area has a lot of um, metal material or not. The second, uh, it may be inaccurate reading, inaccurate reading and recording, reading or recording of the booker. Another point, uh, possible causes of the misclosure is the presence of faults in the instrument, uh, instrument used. See, the presence of false lines. See, you may find that maybe your magnetic compass, it does not uh, read accurate the angle because there is a certain fault in that instrument. So this may be one among the, um, the causes of the, of the errors, I mean, during the prismatic compass survey. Or well, sometimes we say the presence, I mean, an experience, an experience or unskilled, and skilled of the booker or the surveyor. See, the one who uh, is acting as a booker or the surveyor sometimes may not have a too much or a great experience in doing the surveying work by using the, the prismatic comp compass survey. So this is the problem which may lead to to the occurrence of what of error during measurement. <coughs> Then we have another point. Apart from this, the rocks or soil type may also affect the, the measurement of the bearings. How? Sometimes the nature of the land may be, uh, of, of, uh, may be comprised of uh, metal materials, you see, uh, in large amounts. So in that point, you have to consult the geologist before doing any surveying work in a certain area. So that the geologist can tell you either the, the land is made up of which type of minerals, See, so sometimes the presence of a uh, certain type of minerals, especially the metal minerals uh, around a given area, may affect uh, the measurement of the bearing using the prismatic compass survey. As remember, the prismatic compass survey is made up of, of magnets. Okay. Lastly, I can say you have to make sure you know the possible causes of the misclosure and how to reduce or to stop them. So you are most welcome um, on Darasa Online next time. Thank you very much.